Today we're going to talk about the relationship among total product, average product, and marginal product. To begin this discussion, it will be helpful if we talk about a production function. We can write a production function as Q equals F of E and K, where Q is the level of output, E is the level of employment hours, which we'll initially assume is just the number of workers times average hours worked, and K is the amount of capital. So essentially what we have here is quantity as a function of the amount of labor used and the amount of capital. More generally, we can think of E here as employment hours as representing the variable inputs in a production process in the short run, while K represents the inputs that are fixed. So we can define a short run production relationship between the amount of labor used, which we label as E for employment hours, and the amount of output, or Q. In this table, we show how output varies as we change the number of hours of labor. When there's no labor being used, there's no output. With five hours of labor, we end up with 50 units of output, and so on as we move down the table. One of the things we note here is that initially, as we add new workers, output goes up by progressively larger amounts. For example, the first five workers caused output to go up by 50, the next five caused it to go up by 70 from 50 to 120. But beyond that point, what we find is that output starts increasing by progressively smaller amounts as you add additional units of labor. This is an example of the law of diminishing returns, which states that when other inputs are fixed, increases in the level of a variable input ultimately result in progressively smaller increases in output. Imagine, for example, that you decide to open up a small restaurant. If you're the only worker there, you have to do all the food preparation yourself, you have to take the orders, you have to cook the food, you have to handle the cashier, and you also have to wash the dishes and clean the tables and so forth. If you add a second worker, you can divide up the tasks, and you can might imagine that output goes up by even more than twice as much because each of you could specialize specialize in what you're best suited for. But eventually, if you have a fixed amount of grill space and fryers and refrigerators and tables, adding additional workers will result in smaller and smaller increases in output. In particular here, we see that as you go beyond the level of 35 here, output initially doesn't change and then declines as you use additional workers. In that case, too many cooks spoiled the broth. A related concept that's going to be important is the concept of average product. Average product is defined to be the output per unit of a resource. For labor, it would be the average product of employee hours equals Q over E, output per worker or per hour of work. For capital, it would be output per unit of capital. In general, you see average product mentioned quite a bit in the news when you hear reports about productivity. If you hear that productivity either rose or fell in a given quarter, what they're really talking about is the average product of labor. Here we've illustrated the average product in this table and we can see that in each case average product is just equal to total product or output uh, Q divided by the amount of labor used. So 50 over 5 is 10, 120 over 10 is 12, and so on as we go down the table. Now notice what happens here. Initially, average product goes up, but then it starts to fall. And this decline is ultimately due to the law of diminishing returns that we've just talked about. We can also define marginal product. While average product is a measure of output per worker, or a measure of the average productivity of labor, marginal product is a measure of the additional output that results from the use of an additional unit of resource. For labor, we can measure that as the change in output over the change in employee hours. For capital, we could also measure the marginal product of capital as the change in output divided by the change in the amount of capital. Marginal product of labor has been added to the short run production function here. And notice we're measuring the marginal product for intervals here. When labor use goes from 0 to 5, output goes from 0 to 50. So in the interval between 0 and 5 units of labor, the marginal product would be the change in output, 50, divided by the change in labor, 5. And so we have 50 over 5, which is just 10. Similarly, when we go from 5 to 10 units of labor, we end up with output increase by 70. So we have a change in output in the numerator of 70 
a change in labor and denominator of 5, and 70 over 5 is 14. And if you look down the table, you'll see that for all the intervals here, the marginal product is just equal to the change in total output divided by the change in labor use. And again, what we see is that marginal product initially rose and then fell. In fact, when we talk about the law of diminishing returns, another name for that is the law of diminishing marginal productivity. And we see that here, that while it initially increases as you start using your capital and fixed inputs more efficiently, beyond some point, in this case, once you get past the interval between 5 and 10, the marginal product of labor falls continuously. In the interval between 35 and 40, output doesn't change, which means those additional workers generated no increase in output, and therefore the marginal product of labor in that interval is zero. Similarly, when we go from 40 to 45 units of labor, output fell by five units, so each additional worker in that interval resulted in a decline in the total amount of output, so the marginal product of an additional hour of work in that interval would be negative one. Now this doesn't mean that the additional workers are less productive, it's just that given that you have a fixed amount of capital, adding additional workers actually results in a decline in output because those workers don't have enough tools to work with and they start getting in each other's way. Here I've illustrated a short run production function that corresponds to the tables that we've seen above. Notice initially output is rising at an increasing rate, but then eventually diminishing return sets in and output starts increasing at a decreasing rate. And eventually here, output reaches a maximum and begins to fall. Corresponding to that total product curve, there's also average and marginal product curves. As we noted before, both of them exhibit first an increase followed by a decrease, but if we look back at the table, we saw that marginal product rose by a larger amount and fell by a larger amount, while the average changes more slowly. And that's the nature of the difference between marginal and average. Marginal refers to the incremental effect of an additional unit of labor. Average tells you what happens on average, and the average changes more slowly than the incremental effect. Now, notice an interesting interesting phenomena here, and this is an important one that we'll be coming back to several times. If we look at the point where the marginal and average product curves intersect, we observe that that appears to be the maximum level of average product. In this case, it occurs when E0 hours of labor are used, and that in fact is correct. And to, the reason for that is purely intuitive. If we think about any level of labor use to the left of E0, we observe that marginal product is greater than average product. What that means is that the contribution of an additional worker is greater than the average amount that workers are already producing. And if an additional worker produces more output than the average amount produced, that's going to raise the average up. Similarly, if we move to the right of E0, an additional worker produces less output than an average worker is producing and that pulls the average down. So what that tells us is to the left of E0, average product is rising. To the right of E0, average product is falling. And therefore, the point at which it changes from rising to falling must be a maximum. So the average and marginal product curves will always intersect at the maximum level of average product.